apathetic towards that message. There's only one end when we die, and it's not a good one. And you don't know when you're going to die. People die suddenly these days, don't they? A lot of people are dying suddenly all over the world, aren't they? Oh, you like that, do you? Yeah, you know what the Bible says? Those who hate me love death. Those who hate me love death. And that's what we live. We live in a culture of death. Uh, slaughtering babies in the womb, in the mother's womb. Aren't they? Women queuing up to murder their babies in the, in the womb these days. Ten million, ten million babies have been murdered in their mother's womb since 1967 when this wicked nation made it legal to slaughter a baby in the womb. This nation loves death. I have an opinion, my dear. I know right from wrong. Yeah, but you've got an opinion too. And when you, when you know right from wrong, that that's proves that God has given you a conscience to know right from wrong, you see. And we all have a God-given conscience. And some of us harden our, our, the voice of our conscience and do wicked things, don't we? Like murder babies in the womb. Don't they? This nation, 10 million babies. I mean, come on, folks, let's... Let's admit we've done wrong. This nation has committed heinous crimes against the holy God by doing such things. But not only that, just to prove to you that this is a culture of death. Now we're talking about killing people when they get too old and burdensome. Euthanasia, they call it. Give it a nice posh name like they did with abortion. And so if they can't get you in the mother's womb... They'll get you when you're old and decrepit, when you're defenseless, and they'll just give you a, maybe a, an injection or something and kill you off. We live in a culture of death. A culture of death. That's what we live in, don't we? And God says people who hate him love death. Death is what floats their boat. People are obsessed with dying, with death. And we're killing others. But it's not just this country. It's everywhere around the world. I mean, in this country, we've got knife crime in London, skyrocketing. In America, there's people shooting each other. And then in the Middle East, they're slaughtering each other. Bombs and, and bullets killing each other, aren't they? So we, we live in a world that's, that loves death because they hate God. You see, God, he's the giver of life. He's the one who gives life. And he's the one who takes life. And so it's wrong for us to take vengeance, you see. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. You see, so it's not a God-given right to take vengeance. Vengeance is God's. And he's the one who gives eternal life. You can have... You can have your sins forgiven. You can have the free gift of eternal life. But it doesn't come through you being religious and changing your life and reforming your life and being a better person. It comes via the cross of Jesus Christ. He died on that cross. He took the vengeance of God on that cross for all his people's sin. Every wicked thought they've had, every wicked word they've spoken, and every wicked act they've done, including the wicked acts they've done in secret. You see, on the day of judgment, everything done in the dark, in secret, that you've done, that you know is wrong and God knows is wrong, it's all going to be brought into the light. It's all going to be brought into the light. If you've got any questions, we need to answer questions. We've got answers to your questions because we've got the truth. The truth shall set you free, God says. You can be set free. Set free from living a slave to sin and a slave to the devil. You're, you're a slave to something, my friends. The devil holds you captive to do his will. He's the father of lies. He's a murderer from the beginning. And there's no truth in him. And if you're not a Christian, you're a slave to the devil. He says, jump. And you're asking, how high? But Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. 
He whom the Son sets free can be free indeed. You can be set free from oppressive religion. You can be set free from your sin. Whatever sin it is, anger, lust, what's that? You're what? Oh yeah, you love the devil, right? Yeah. Well, the devil doesn't love you, my dear. There's no love in him. It's amazing. People say they love the devil. They worship the devil. we got young kids saying that constantly. And they probably do. They probably do worship the devil. I think it's a funny little thing to do. But the devil is a vile creature. He hates humanity with a pure hatred. And he doesn't come like a little pink horned figure with a pitchfork where it's obviously the devil. The devil can manifest himself as an angel of light of something that looks good to us. And you look at all the religions in the world, it's all dead religion. From the father of lies, the devil. And all religion apart from Christianity will see the people who follow those religions end up in a devil's hell. You guys reading your Bible? Uh, no, I burn mine on the daily. Oh, all right. Need to keep us warm. How are we doing? We've met before, actually. Twice. We have. I remember you. Do you? Yeah, I remember you, my friend. Are you still not saved? Uh, You're still not, not a Christian? Uh, Only Christians go to heaven, you know. Ah, uh, well, I'm not going there anyways. Well, you're not at the moment, but Could when... Would you like some milkshake? No, thanks. Sure? When, when God makes you a Christian, then you go to heaven, you see. When God makes you a Christian. And he'll do that in spite of your uh, rebellion, in spite of your unwillingness. You know, many people, atheists have read the Bible. They come to the Bible, I'm going to prove it, disprove it. I'm going to yeah. prove it wrong. And they've come to the Bible, started reading it, and they've become Christians. God has saved them as they've read the Bible. You see, and he can do that for you. So if you're an atheist, my friend, I don't know your situation, I can't remember whether you're atheist or not. Oh, well, I'm religious, just not to your religion. I, I well, what kind of religion do you subscribe to? Uh, paganism. Paganism? Yeah. So you worship the creation instead of the creator? Can you see how silly that is? Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, you to expect the one guy made it all. Yeah, made every single thing. Every little thing happened because of this guy. And it's still going on and on and on. So with all, obviously with all the wars, the famine, the world hunger, all that stuff. And then, so we're expected that he's going to come down one day, save us all, and then expect us all to be like one big happy family. No, God doesn't save everybody. God only saves his people. You see, Christians are the only people who go to heaven. All other religions will see their followers end up in a devil's hell. Because Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the truth. Al Haq, Jesus is the truth, the life. And nobody goes to the Father but by Him. You see? He's done it all on that cross. And if we could get there through His Lamb, through fasting and praying, and visit Mecca, saying the Shihada, if we could get to heaven that way, why did Jesus die on a cross? If we could get there through Mary, and our favorite priest, and going to church, be baptized, and the Holy Communion, and okay. saying, praying the rosary. Why did Jesus thing. die on that cross? You could say that, but then you could also say that for the, maybe the Norse or the Egyptians. Why, no. why were they wrapping their no, 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 Norse God died on a cross for people's no, sin, did he? No, Norse God died on a cross for people's sin. That's right. right. But, but you need a, a sacrifice for your sin. Thousands of soldiers have won history Hang on. believe that dying in battle was their way to get to their Yeah, they, they do. They believed a lie. Say, the Egyptians, yeah. in fact, they went on and on. I'll give you a dark See you later. You're a fraud. See you again, my friend. See you again, God willing. If God gives you life that long, I'll see you again. You see, in God, we live and move and have our being. I know we take life for granted these days. We don't stop to think who gave us life. But the reality is it's the God of the Bible, the creator of everybody and everything who is currently sustaining you, is made you, he knit you together in your mother's womb, brought you forth from your mother's womb, either male or female, male and female, God made them, the God of the Bible. And without him, there wasn't anything made that was made, you see. 
The God of the Bible made you, and he's the one who's currently sustaining you. You know, when Jesus Christ, before he went to the cross, he went before the authorities. He stood before the authorities at the time, and one guy called Pilate, and Pilate forgotten, he thought he, he was the pinnacle of authority, he'd forgotten who's really in control, and Pilate wanted Jesus to speak to him. But Jesus didn't speak, he went like a lamb to the slaughter, remember the Bible says, but he didn't speak up for himself, and Pilate said, I have power to crucify you, why aren't you speaking up before me, you see? And Jesus said, you have no power over me unless it's given to you from above, you see? Jesus Christ knew that nobody had power over him apart from the God of the Bible, you see? The God of the Bible, he gives life and he sustains life and nobody has any power over anybody else in life unless it's given to them from God. See, the God of the Bible is not a puny God who created everything and then let it exist apart from his will. You know, he didn't create everything and then walk away and see what happens. He's not a puny God like that. The God of the Bible created everything with a purpose in mind. So everything that happens throughout history, throughout time, happens for a reason. And I mean by everything, absolutely everything. The good and the bad. God's got a purpose for it all, right? <coughs> what an amazing God. He's got a purpose for evil. Even the wicked things that men and women perpetrate in life. Hello, Richard. But you don't sleep. It's very icy. Careful. It's very slippery there. How are you? All right. Good to see you again. What are you doing on Wednesday? Well, we can't make it on Friday, so we come Wednesday this week. Are you going somewhere else on Friday? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Uh, will you make it next Friday? Yes, hopefully. God willing. Uh, are you I, okay? I, the end of the world, eh? It's getting nearer, uh, Richard. Yeah, it's getting nearer. Every time we meet, it's getting nearer. Yeah, it's getting nearer. It's going to come soon. Right. Bye. God bless Richard. Like Richard says... It's the end of the world. The end of the world's coming. It is going to end. This world won't carry on as it is. But it's not going to end because of your carbon footprint. It's not going to end because you eat far too much meat and don't recycle your plastic. That's not going to save the planet being a, being a tree hugger. You can't save the planet by reducing your carbon footprint, friends. So you don't even have to try. Please don't try. Driving an electric car isn't going to save the planet. But the world is going to end. God has made a new heaven, a new earth, in which righteousness dwells, where there's no more sin. A perfect world that we all desire to live in. And this earth, this world system is going to get burned up at God's appointed time. Not because we're using t too much fossil fuels. That's ridiculous. That's silly. That's as daft as the Big Bang. That insults your intelligence as well. And so Jesus Christ is going to come back. That same Jesus Christ born in a manger, lived a sinless life, fulfilled over 300 prophecies from the Old Testament. That same Jesus Christ who went round Opening blind eyes, deaf ears, cured incurable disease at the time, leprosy. He healed the sick. He raised dead people back to life. One guy was dead four days and then Jesus Christ came and said, come out of the tomb. He came out. Brought him back to life. See, this is power. God who has power over death. Hello. Are you a Christian? Well, you need to be. Well, Christians are the only people going to heaven, you see. You don't have to go to hell. And there is no purgatory. I was a Roman Catholic, told lies about purgatory. This so-called second chance after death. There's no second chance, friends. It's heaven or hell. The Bible's clear. But Jesus died so that you and I could enter heaven after death. 
so that we can go to a better world, a world that's full of joy evermore, where there's no more misery, no more depression, no more anger, no more bitterness, no more unforgiveness, no more hatred. The world's full of hatred, isn't it? You look around, people hating on one another because of their different color skin or where they live or whichever football team they support. See, the enemy knows, the devil knows, divide and conquer. And the world's full of hatred. But hatred, my friends, if you hate anybody, please remember that God considers hatred equal to murder in his eyes. And so when we die, we need to know that our sins are forgiven. And our sins can be forgiven, but only at the foot of the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, trusts him, will not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, through Jesus Christ, the world might be saved. Whoever believes, whoever trusts him fully from their heart, is not condemned, but whoever doesn't believe, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're too, you haven't got time for Jesus. You're condemned already, he says. And this is the condemnation that light, the light, Jesus Christ, has come into this world. But men and women love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. You see, friends, until you see yourself, how God sees you, that you're a, a sinner in his sight and that's all you'll ever be. There's no goodness in you. And stop professing your own goodness and stop thinking that you deserve heaven when you die because you're kind to animals and the vulnerable and you give a few quid to charity. If you stop professing your own goodness, because that's the one thing that's going to keep you from heaven, your own self-righteousness, you see. Nobody ever goes to heaven for anything, and I mean by anything, absolutely anything, they do. You think about Mother Teresa, a lot of people assume Mother Teresa, oh, she was a good person. If she's in heaven, she didn't get there by doing anything. Because it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, you see. You don't have to do a thing. It's already done on the cross. And all that's required is you look and live. Look by faith and see Jesus Christ by faith hanging on that cross. In light of all your sin. All the wicked, nasty, shameful things you've done in life. All the selfish things you've done in life. All the sneaky things you've done in life. You look at that cross in light of all your sin that God knows about and you say he died for me. I believe he died for me. And you're forgiven. You're forgiven from now and forever. All your sin is blotted out. It doesn't matter what you've done. You see, Jesus can save the worst of the worst. He can give hope to the hopeless. He can set the captives free, my friend. You're not too far gone, my friend. Nobody's too far gone. You know the Bible says, a living dog is, a bet is better than a dead lion. A dead lion can't do anything. There's no hope for a dead lion, is there? You're alive. You're walking about. That's how I know you're not dead. You're alive. You still have hope, my friend. There's opportunity for you today to cry out to Jesus, to call upon him and ask for his forgiveness. Put your faith and trust in him, my friends. Because your sins will find you out. Yeah, dead lion. You see, there's no, no hope for a dead lion, is there? A dead lion is worse off than a living dog, the Bible says. A living mutt is better off than a dead lion, as powerful as a lion is. And while you're alive, there's opportunity for you. While you have breath in your lungs, while you're in your lungs, lent to you by God, there's opportunity for you to get right with God. But you don't know when God is going to stop lending you breath. He hasn't told anybody, has he? Your day of death is appointed by God, just like mine. And we can go at any moment, can't we? Some of you might not be here tomorrow. Things happen. And so that's why the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time, Carlisle. Cry out to God. Cry out, God... Be merciful to me, a sinner. 
And he will. No one's ever come to God, to Jesus, in repentance and gone away disappointed yet. And the billions upon billions of people who, who are in heaven now, who were Christian, who have died and gone to heaven, they've all come the same way, through that cross, through faith alone in what God has done on that cross. And that's the way you must come if you want to have hope in the next life. Because this life is fading away. Time is short. And eternity is forever. And so God commands all people everywhere today. He commands you today in Carlisle to repent. Repentance is a change of mind, a change of direction. You stop railing against God. You stop shaking your fist against your creator. Stop pretending he doesn't exist. And align your thoughts up with this, the Bible. And God commands it of you today to repent. To turn from your sin, whatever your sin is, your favorite pet sin is, whether it's adultery, drunkenness, some drug addiction. Whatever it is, friends, you must turn from your sin and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Or you'll perish. Don't die and perish. Don't die and go to a devil's hell. Come to Jesus Christ today. He's the one who died on that cross. Taking the payment that your sin requires before a holy God. He took the wrath of God in his people's place. He bowed his head. He said it's finished. Paid in full. And willingly laid down his life just like he said he would. God always does what he says. In fact, you can't find anywhere where he's never done what he says. In the Bible, you can't find in the whole the history of humanity. You can't find once, one time where God has never done what he says. He always does what he says. And he died on that cross. Jesus Christ died, buried. Three days later, he defeated death itself. This is God who has power over death. He raised himself back from the dead. Which other religious leader has ever defeated death? Muhammad? Well, you can probably go and visit his bones somewhere in the grave. he would be rotten away somewhere. He died, didn't he? He didn't raise himself from the dead. Buddha, same thing. Mary, the Roman Catholic Mary, she died. You could probably visit her bones somewhere. It cost you a fortune if you, you do. But Jesus Christ, he defeated death, rose himself back from the grave and was seen by over 500 people. Over 500 eyewitnesses saw Jesus Christ crucified, buried, and then resurrected bodily. That's where humanity's hope is at. That shows us that when we die, that's not the end. That Jesus Christ has entered that He's defeated death so that we don't have to fear death. Death is just passing through. Just like so sleep for a Christian. If we know where we're going and we're going to a better place, a perfect world, there's no fear of death. Death has lost its sting. Jesus has done it all. He was seen by 500 eyewitnesses at one time. <laughs> That's good. And we've got eyewitness accounts in the Bible if you take the time to read it. Put down Candy Crush, switch off Netflix and Fortnite and read the word of God. God has spoken and he's given us all we need in the Bible. We don't need any other so-called revelation from God. This was written over a period of 1,500 years, 15 centuries by 40 different authors. Most of them didn't know each other, so nobody conspired in secret to spoil humanity's fun. The Bible is divine in origin. It's from your creator. And he says that he's going to return one day at the shout of an archangel. Jesus Christ is coming back on the clouds from heaven. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who don't know God and those who don't obey this. Jesus Christ is coming back, you see, to take vengeance. Because he's the judge. 
And you don't have to meet him on that day terrified. You don't have to meet him on that day shaking in fear. You can meet him on that day and be welcomed into his presence and spend eternity with him, the one who died and gave his life a ransom for many. Put your faith and trust in him today, friends. That's the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. There is no other way. You can't get to heaven. You can't have your sins forgiven. You can't save your own immortal soul at all. You can't save it any other way other than by the cross of Jesus Christ. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? God killed his son. It pleased God, the Bible says, to kill, to crush him, to crush his son. How can there be any other way to peace with God? And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you'll be saved. But heaven, my friends, that eternal world of joy, escaping the flames of hell, that everlasting fire, that lake of fire, escaping hell, damnation forever, it only comes via the cross. Only Christians go to heaven. Only Christians know God. Only Christians are certain that when they die, they go to that eternal world of joy. Why? Because Jesus is the only way. And he's, his word tells us that these things are written so that you know for certain that you have everlasting life. And only people who love God, who have a love in their heart, and you can check this for yourself. Here's a test. See if you're going to heaven. Do you have any sincere love in your heart for Jesus Christ? Do you love Jesus Christ with a sincerity in your heart? Only you can answer that. Because... Only heaven is for people who love God. I has not seen nor hear heard nor the heart of man imagined what God has laid up for all those who love him. If you have no love in your heart for Jesus Christ, the God man, if you have no love in your heart for your creator, Jesus Christ, then heaven isn't your destination at this moment in time. Cry out to God, ask him to give you a love for him. You see, the God of the Bible, the creator of everybody and everything, is all-powerful. He spoke everything into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. God has limitless power. He's more powerful than any terrorist. He's more powerful than any lying politician or oligarch. Jesus Christ has limitless power. And it's love for him. It will determine whether you spend eternity in a, a devil's hell, suffering unimaginable wrath forevermore, or spend eternity in a place that's perfect, an eternal world of joy, joy unspeakable where there's no possibility of that joy ever being broken again, and peace. Well, everybody's looking for peace these days. Peace that lasts forever. An eternal world of peace. No more wars. No more terrorism. No more threat of a nuclear war. Imagine an eternal world of peace where no possibility of that world ever being broken, the peace of that world ever being broken again. Why wouldn't you want that for yourself? Don't you care about your own self? Don't you care about where your immortal soul is going to spend forever? Because it is going to spend forever somewhere. All that's in question is the destination, friends. And the good news is, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news is that God has done it all so that there's nothing left for you to do. I'm not here today telling people they've got to get baptized and go to church. That can't save you. I'm not here telling people you've got to give money to a church or money to some charity. That can't help you. I'm not here telling you that you've got to be a better person. You can't be a better person. If you were a perfect person, from now until you stand before God, you'd still deserve hell. Why? Because you're guilty. You're already guilty. You've got a guilty record. And you need the blood of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, you see. So trust Jesus today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved.
Cry out to him. Call upon him while he's near. <coughs> the Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from now and forever. Their greatest need taken care of. If you want a Bible, we'll give you a free Bible. We're not here for your money. We want to see you saved. We want to see you in heaven one day. But at this moment in time, it doesn't look good for Carlisle. At this moment in time, there's not many of you going to heaven. <clears throat> I know. Well, that's my point. But you don't have to go to hell. No, you don't. If you knew what hell was, you wouldn't want to go there, my friend. You realize there's no friends in hell. There's no weekends off in hell. There's no party in hell. There's no chocolate in hell. Because the Bible says it's a place of everlasting torment. Yeah, you know the Bible's true. That's, that's a fact, my friend. You know God exists. I'm not here to try and convince you that.